everybody. Welcome to the Hallmark Keys podcast. We are really excited today. We have one of our hall stars here. We have Robert Buckley here to tell us all about his new movie. And I'm film critic Rachel Wagner and Anna's here. Hey, everybody. And Robert, thank you so much for coming back. Your second interview with us. I, you know, I know I just, I left the first one and thought I could do better. So, <laughs> you know, I'm glad we're running it back. Yeah, yeah, this is good. All right. <laughs> Well, how have you been? We talked to you last, before last holiday season, and now we're talking to you this year. So how was your 2021? Did you have a good year? I had a great year. Yeah. I mean, let's see. We, uh, sure, we, we we got our first house, my wife and I, and we moved and we had a baby. Oh my gosh. Oh. We make a sequel to the Christmas house. I got to join Chesapeake Shores. I mean, it was a great year. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, congratulations on the new little one. That's so exciting. Yeah, that's awesome. What's that been like for you? Do you a lot of lost night's sleep? <laughs> oh, yeah, big time. <laughs> but it is more than offset by the joy that that little guy brings into our lives. It is such a cool ride. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very much digging it. That's, oh, that's awesome. Did you grow up in a big family? 26 of us. No, it was just me and my older brother. So I would say uh-huh. it was a fairly, you know, normal sized nuclear family, little yeah. mom, dad, brother, brother action. That's good. Did you? I did. Yeah. I'm family with six. So. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you almost got a whole soccer team right there. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. I only have, I only have four. So just, yeah, I just have one brother. That's it. So yeah. Normal. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so the main, the important thing is that the number is even because as soon yeah. as you start having an odd number, it's like dad's dad's sitting by a stranger when you go to the amusement park, you know? <laughs> yeah. Everyone has the right buddy except dad. Yeah. That's right. Needs yeah. to be even. I agree. <laughs> yeah. My family is especially unusual because my parents kind of did it in two sets, two batches. There's a, like a 10 year gap in between the two sets of kids. And uh, so we kind of joke that you, you know, burn the first batch. <laughs> you got to try, try again. <laughs> so it's fun. It keeps things exciting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so last time we talked to you was before the first Christmas house and you were very involved in that one. And so how, how did you feel like it turned out? The first one? Yes. I was very happy with how it turned out. I thought, um, you know, the, I will say this, in my opinion, and you know, this, this might not be, it's like when you ask a parent, like, Hey, which is your favorite child, (laughs) you know? And the, the, the diplomatic answer is like, I love all of my children evenly. Listen, truth be told, I like the second Christmas house better than the first. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah. You know, it, to me, just it's it hits on all the levels. I really, really wanted the first, and the first did a great job. I love the film that we made, yeah. but I feel like there's so many factors. Like you know, one of them being like you know that we, the cast really knew each other. You know, like we showed up and it was like we hadn't skipped a beat. You know, and 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 I think a lot of that lent itself to to the the, the movie because like there's there's so many scenes where what ended up actually in the movie is stuff that wasn't in the script like little just like jabs and funny things that you don't have when you don't really know each other you know but when you're comfortable with each other like you're you're more you're more um comfortable just like riff and to give each other grief you know and so there was there was a lot of playfulness in the family stuff and and so yeah, the, this, you know, typically, I don't know, man, I think is the track record for sequels that they're usually not as good as the first. Yeah, yes. that's correct. Especially at Hallmark. <laughs> is that right? Okay. I we're didn't all know a little that. nervous. Yes, we're always a little nervous when it's a sequel. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, you know what? I'll be curious to know what you think. But yes, as objectively as I can be, and I realize that's not easy given how close I am to this. I, I think I think we took what worked in the first one and and like ran with it and made a better movie 
Well, the problem usually is, is that once they get the couple together, they kind of don't know what to do next. And so they make them break up or do you, they, they get kind of weird and dark sometimes. And it's just like, that's not what we wanted for our couple, but it's like, they can't come up with any interesting conflict. But yeah. since this movie is all about the family, yeah. hopefully that won't be I think, the case. Yeah. I think that'll help it a lot. Yeah. Sure, that makes sense. It's tough when you're really only tracking one story, right? Mm -hmm. Because it does, it puts it puts the onus of everything on that one relationship. Whereas in this one, you know, you're 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 following three separate couples, mm -hmm. and then you're witnessing kind of the fourth relationship, which is everyone coming together as the family. Yeah. You know, and I think one of the things I I really that was very important when we set out to do the first one was I wanted it to be fun and I wanted it to be funny. And, and I feel like, you know, we did that to a degree, but I feel like in this one, it's, it's even funnier. And what's, what's cool about that is that it, it actually helps the sincere heartfelt moments land even better. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like, because we were able to get sillier and bigger here when we slow down, you know, and get vulnerable and get real, it, it really has a nice place to, to sit. Mm. So, yeah. I, you know, We'll see. We'll see what y'all think of it. But I, uh, I, I like what we've made. Well, I was going to ask if we're getting a return of Handsome Justice or if that show's been canceled on your oh, in the world of Christmas no. House. <laughs> I, mean, I, I will. I will go ahead and just give you a spoiler that we open the movie with Handsome Justice. Oh yes, Listen, I love that. <laughs> that that bit was so funny to us, yeah. and. And, and, and I just, I think it's so much fun that there was no way we were going to drop that. Like that was, that was very important. I think to everyone, we all, we all just love the silliness of that, the kind of, you know, just poking fun at the, at the TV yeah. show. So yes, Handsome That's Justin good news. is very alive and well, even more so in this one. Yes, oh, that's so very good, good news. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't lose it from uh, leaving the corporate meeting last time. No, so yeah. I guess that really was a spoiler, wasn't it? <laughs> Sorry, guys. We also all die in a plane crash at the end, but we're on an island, so maybe we didn't die. Oh, no, that's lost. Went dark. <laughs> really dark. Yeah, right? <laughs> so the, were you as involved in the second one as you were the first one? Because I know you were pretty involved in that first uh, one. Yes, I was still very involved in this one. The only difference being, <clears throat> whereas the first one was really built around kind of my childhood and my family traditions with how we built the house. So I came up with the story uh, with the writer, Aaron, on this one, since it wasn't really about the, like, my family of it, we sort of just uh, let Aaron run with it. So the story on this one isn't by me, it's just by Aaron, you know, um, but still very much a part of it, you know, giving notes all along the way. And, you know, as a producer on it, I, you know, I was with it from, you know, pre-production to post-production. What did your family think of the movie, the That's first one? Yeah. I haven't told them about it yet. No, I'm kidding. They <laughs> really liked the first one. We all watched it together, in fact. And, and, and yeah, it got the uh, overwhelming thumbs up. Good. That's good. <laughs> Could you imagine awesome. if they didn't? How weird. Yeah, that, that would be awkward. Yeah, that would be very awkward. <laughs> Merry Christmas. I made a movie about you. They're just like, nah. <laughs> Whatever. We're Whatever. Good. An Olive Garden gift card, but okay. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Well, we're excited about the movie. It's we're gonna get even more of Jonathan Bennett in that you're like playing your brother in this one with now they've adopted and we're gonna even get more of an arc from them. Is that right? Yes. So where we, where we pick up is that they have, um, they now have two children. So it's mm -hmm. them sort of adjusting to, uh, to now having double the children in their lives and, um, and that, and then, yeah. And then there's a lot of, there's a, so we, we do follow Brandon and Jake and we also get to see a lot of Brandon and Mike and sort of their sibling rivalry and their relationship throughout the movie. So yeah, there's plenty of, uh, of Jonathan and, and Brad. Mm -hmm. Good forward to that that'll be fun yeah they do great stuff their, their stuff is awesome and it treat and sharon are so good in this one you know one thing uh about treat and sharon are both so funny they're so funny and they're so talented and in the first one you know 
one of my only regrets was that we, I felt like we didn't find enough opportunities to let them play. Their mm-hmm. storyline was kind of heavier, you know? Yeah. And it's, again, this is one of the, the changes that we made that I really liked was that they play in this one, you know? And now we're, we're getting to see what their life is like, you know, post-retirement and enjoying just that retired lifestyle. And it's lighter and it's funnier and they do such good work. They kill it. It's great. Well, that's that's good. good. I'm glad. I'll glad. I'm glad they'll get some some fun and just to see them smile and laugh together. And yeah, they're too funny and good not to. You know, it's a waste otherwise. Yeah. Well, and and you got to work with Treat in Chesapeake Shores. I did. So you had a whole year working with them practically. I did. I mean, we let's see. We did. Yeah, we did Christmas House, and then I don't even know, like. Five months later, he was the first person who reached out to me about Chesapeake Shores. I, I was oh, going to really? ask that. I was, I was, uh, it was like 10, 15 at night and my wife and I were up watching TV and my phone chirps and I look and it's a text from Tree who lives in the East Coast, mind you, right? So he's like three, two or three hours ahead of me and it's just, you up? <laughs> and I, I had this hilarious moment of like, what is- I, why am I getting a you up back from Treat Williams at like 10, 15 at night? You know, like what is happening? Yeah. And, uh, and so he was like, listen, there's some, there's some talk, you know, that there's some changes happening here. You, you've been discussed, just wanted to let, you know, have you heard anything? I said, no, I've heard nothing, you know, but then he, um, he gave me a very convincing sales pitch. Just, you know, he said, listen, this is an amazing group. It's a beautiful place to shoot. It's a lot of fun. You should come. And I love Treat, you know, and any excuse to hang out with Treat and get to work with some nice people. I was like, yeah, that, that, that actually sounds great. So I, I signed up to it. They didn't even have a character. They, they had an idea of a character. Like I, I basically signed on to, you're going to be the new guy. So it wasn't until, again, so like it was just Treat's, Treat's endorsement and them going, hey, do you want to be the new guy? And it wasn't until I was like, in quarantine in Canada, waiting to start that they, I got a call from Fief Sutton and Mark League and the, the showrunners saying like, hey, do you have any questions? I was like, yeah, uh, what am I doing here? Who am I, you know? <laughs> and they're like, oh sure, yeah, here's the character. So, I mean, I, I, it was all really so rushed. It was so like last minute and, and, and hurried, but it was the coolest surprise uh, that the character I got to play Evan was so much fun and they really wrote in such a way that I think it just kind of catered to my personality and, and my sense of humor and then the cast was great treat was treat was spot on you know Megan uh, who plays Abby obviously uh, was is a delight to work with she's she's, she's like me she takes the work seriously but not herself seriously so we, we play kind of all the time and everyone the rest of the cast was incredibly welcoming and warm and yeah I, I didn't know what to expect but whatever I had expected it surpassed my expectations yeah that's awesome that was one thing this season I thought that we thought and um, we do an offshoot of this we do chess peak chats and um one of the things um that we talked about was just this season how good the writing was you really felt like everyone had arcs and there was more layers um to the writing and it was just so much better than previous seasons and we were just so appreciative and the girls they got to interview uh Fief and um Mark. Mark. Yes. They interviewed both of them. And, um, and yeah, you could just tell from what the, from the interviews I listened to them, I didn't get to be on those, but yeah, I was like, yeah, you guys did like a really good job. Like the writing is so much better than it has been. And, um, what did you think about, I mean, Evan is, I feel like Evan's a very different character for Hallmark because he's quirky and he's a businessman, but he's not a, like a typical one dimensional bad man of business. He has lots of layers and he has heart and he's he's just kind of different and um i really like that about him i don't think i've ever seen a character like him and um so how did you did you enjoy playing him and how do you feel like you and him are similar in any way if you think you are i i had a blast playing him you know and that was again you know when i showed up i i genuinely didn't know like am i going to be walking in and just 
like, is this going to be like a soap opera where it's just season five starts and I'm there, but everyone's calling me Trace? Like, I didn't know <laughs> what they were planning on doing. Yeah. And like you, I had, so obviously I did my homework. I had, I watched all the seasons before I got up there and, you know, it was a much heavier tone before season five. Like season four was, was a very heavy, the tone mm -hmm. was very heavy. Yeah. And, um, so I didn't know if I was going to be playing sort of a very similar thing to Trace, which I was hoping wouldn't be the case because then I feel like you're really setting up the audience to compare the two characters. Yeah. And I think the very smart thing they did is they went 180 degrees in the opposite direction with Evan. So it's not a matter of like, you're not comparing apples to apples. You're like, they're two totally different people. You know, when I was doing press where people were like, how, you know, how do you think Trace fans are going to feel about Evan? I'm like, it, that's sort of like saying, if you like sushi, how could you like pizza? Like, well, they're entirely different, you know, yeah. both yeah. great in their own respect. Um, so I like that we were playing in sort of a whole new sandbox with Evan. And, and yeah, I like that he had layers, you know, I, yeah. I like that he wasn't just like, you know, because we, you know, you know that businessman who comes into town and he's like, I own the big bookstore, you own the small bookstore. <laughs> And then it's like, but maybe he's not, you know what I mean? Like we've seen it a lot. You know? Yeah. That guy. So I was appreciative that that wasn't the case, you know, that the, like the, he was, he was quirky and he was odd and he was <laughs> awkward, you know, and what's makes up, for right? a harder, it makes for a harder couple name though. Abavan. Evan and Abby. <laughs> Ready to Abby. Abavan? <laughs> Megan and I came up with go. that, and we said it sounds like a pharmaceutical you'd see in a commercial <laughs> with like side effects of that van. Oh, <laughs> That's it true, it does. It <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know, and Howard, Evan, and I like uh, alike. I mean, the sense of humor. I think Evan uses his humor as uh, as definitely a tool, you know, in terms of steering the conversation, deflecting you know, which is something I, I can do as well. Like I defer to my sense of humor to like pacify a situation, like diffuse tension or, you know, poke fun at myself. And, you know, I think Evan, he does, he takes his work very seriously, but he does not take himself very seriously, which is a trait I would like to have, you know, I think I, I try to have, um, you know, but that's something I'm, I would say I'm working on, but just, his general playfulness and his curiosity for life. You know, like, I just, I like, he's naturally enthusiastic. I feel like he's the kind of guy who, when he wakes up in the morning, he's not like, Ugh. he's the kind of guy who wakes up and he's like, awesome. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like he wakes up with some enthusiasm, yeah. some wind in his sails already, where most of us are like, a couple, cup of a couple cups of coffee and I'll get through this, you know? Yeah. He, um, he had me when he told her he was going to be on the golf course and she's like looking all over town for him, like every golf course. And she's like, I know where he's going to be. And then she finds him at the miniature golf place. I was like, yep, he has me now. Like, this is, <laughs> this is my kind of, this is my kind of guy. So I love that. I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. That was fun. So um, sorry, did they, did they, am I right in that that they made the change like while they were all in while they were all in quarantine as far as jesse making the the change and then uh, adding you i believe so yeah they had yeah, the that's intense season. it was the first time ever where they had the entire season already written mm -hmm. uh which is hilarious at the one time they're that ahead yeah. you know, <laughs> the plan immediately changes which is again why when they reached out to me they were like you're the new you're the new guy like they didn't have anything other than yeah. you're really rich. You're very. <laughs> <laughs> so then you had to get okay. up there and quarantine pretty quick then. Right. Yeah. It was one of those things where I think I got a call on a Thursday evening or Friday morning asking if I could be on a plane. Initially it was, if I could be on a plane Monday morning, you know, and again, it, but which that's kind of the way, like this industry is such a circus. You know, it's like rarely is something like planned out ahead of time and goes smoothly. <laughs> it often happens like this, where it's like, it's a fire drill. Like you're bored sitting on your couch doing nothing. And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, can you be on a plane in 16 minutes? And you're like, oh, what? Yeah. You know? And in this case, it was like, you know, it was a 
three month commitment and my wife was pregnant we just moved into a new house so it was like hey no pressure no you have a lot of change in your life (laughs) but you have 20 minutes to decide if you can leave for this job you know (laughs) wow yeah that's a lot um do you have any hopes or dreams for evan for uh season six which hopefully we get which hopefully we get um you know it's funny the i i actually reached out to you know to, to mark and to thief and I, I i said i think i don't need to tell you guys this because you're the ones who who created evan but like my only request is that like you you struck the perfect blend of humor and sincerity mm-hmm. i would love just to see that continue yeah because it it really was so much fun to play you know and that like there was playfulness but then when it got vulnerable and sincere it was great you know it wasn't it wasn't sappy or like um uh what's what's the word um like expository you know it just felt like they were sincere conversation you know what I mean so it was just it was so fun to play so I I just said to them like I I, you don't need this note but for my own peace of mind (laughs) just keep doing what you're doing. Like, let's, let's not change the, the, the secret family recipe on Evan. Yeah, definitely. He's great. And I love how we just keep learning new nuggets about him every episode that was kept it interesting. And it just kind of brought out his heart. And um, I just loved how quirky and how funny he is. And so we really hope there's a season six. Um, Cause I think everyone just really loved this season. Cause it was so much lighter and it just felt like, oh my gosh, we get to see these characters like be happy and like have fun and like, you know, and it was good. It's great. Well, and I think, yeah, there's definitely an energetic shift. Like you said, it's, I think it's, it's, it's very, very noticeable. Uh, yes. At least it was, it was to me in reading it and then and watching it. I, I thought that. And one of the things I think is so great is it really allowed the show to kind of to go back to what it what it what it is kind of supposed to have been from the start which is like it's a show about a family mm-hmm. whereas you know you kind of you, you hit a point where like there was like it was, it was a family story but then there was also kind of a segmented like Trabby story and I think one of the things since they were given this opportunity of like sort of clearing the slate a bit it was like great here's the new guy but we're immediately going to pull him in so it kind of allowed the, the focus to go back to like the family being the main yes. character and the nucleus from which everything else branches out. Definitely. Definitely. Cause like, yeah, like you just, it, it was just became like the Trabby and eight, the Trabby, the Trabby show. <laughs> um, and you know, I love how Evan is a part of the family and he shows up and he's like always around the family when Trace was very removed from the family. Mm-hmm. And so it's definitely so much better as a family ensemble show. So they're doing yes. a great job. And selfishly, you know, as, as the actor playing Evan, it's just so much more fun to get to do stuff with the whole family because it really is, it's a great group, you know? So getting to work with, you know, Diane was a treat and uh, obviously like everyone, treat Barbara, you know, Andrew, Lacey, Amelia, Brendan, everyone was fun. So the fact that Evan was getting brought into the fold I wanted that. Like, I love working with Megan, but it's just fun. Like, you know, why not? Let's let's paint with all the colors, you know, let's throw them in the mix and let them all interact. It it creates for more opportunities for fun storytelling. Ho, ho, ho. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcasts, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash hallmarkies to learn more. 
That's patreon.com slash homeworkies. Do they have any like pranks or goofs behind the scenes <laughs> that you can tell us about? For the Brendan Penny is a goof. <laughs> Brendan <laughs> told us that. Brendan Penny is a goof. Yeah. <laughs> also <laughs> such a delightful human being who I, I love. And what, what that love looks like is perpetually wanting to give him crap. And so here's a story I've never told. Brendan was, was nominated for a Leo the year that I, last year when I was up there shooting. And he's very humble though, right? And so he, I find out, I'm like, whoa, buddy, congratulations. Like that's so awesome. And he was like, it's not, it, no, I don't, it's not, a, don't make a thing of it. Like, it's just whatever, you know? Okay. Super, super downplays it, which then immediately to me means I need to put as big a spotlight on this as I can, because I want to embarrass this man. So what I did was I went and found these giant, like three foot tall, shiny Mylar balloons. And I had, I had, I bought an L and E and an O and a bouquet of flowers and a card saying congratulations. And unfortunately I went to set, but he'd already wrapped that day because I wanted him to go back to his cash chair and just see these giant letters, Leo, and have to explain to everyone why, but he'd wrap. So I ended up having to, it still worked. I put him in front of his, um, his hotel room door. So when he got back from running errands, uh, he was, I just get a text and he's like, you're out of control. What is this? You know what I mean? But he was a good sport. He took a photo with him, but he is definitely one of the ones I, I really enjoy giving a hard time to. Yeah. Good. Well, hopefully he'll get nominated again and, uh, and wait, yes. you can have a repeat <laughs> performance to God's ears because I would love to do it again, but I would, I would get it right this time. I'd mm -hmm. find bigger balloons. I might hire, you know, a mariachi band, I, you know, yeah, yeah. We support you in this. Okay. I'll report we, back. we can help in any way. Let us know. <laughs> That's great. Well, we did last time you were here, we did the fun, silly Christmas questions. Mm -hmm. And so now you get the regular questions. <laughs> <Boo>. <laughs> I know. Yeah. That's fun. <laughs> Wow. First question is what is the best ice cream flavor? If you happen to be at Baskin Robbins, it's peanut butter and chocolate without a doubt. If you're not at Baskin Robbins, I'm a sucker for cookies and cream. Can't go yeah. wrong with that. Yeah. Yeah. It's the gray stuff. It's delicious. It's, right. it's really good. All right. What's your favorite color? Blue. <laughs> blue. Okay, good. I've, okay. ne I've never known the answer to that question to be honest <laughs> i said blue when i was a kid because that's what the mo that's what the majority of people said i don't know i don't yeah. know my wife tells me what looks good on me and i'm like great honey thanks this, <laughs> we should ask her tone. it's an earth tone because she told me you look good in earth tones i'm gonna yeah. she she just she just orders the clothes for me and i put them on like I, i'm a boy when it comes to <laughs> as boy as you can get i'm i am basic <laughs> we should have yeah. her come in and answer these questions so yeah. you know. she should give you a better answer i'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna go with blue why okay, not good. all right what music are you into i listen i'm pretty open you know like again my wife has amazing taste in music so i will often just go through her liked songs on our spotify account and discover stuff but i'm a sucker for the 80s I'm currently rocking out to Christmas music. I'm discovering new Christmas songs. I, I'm a creature of habit. That this is a good thing to know about me. This would inform a lot of these questions. Meaning, if I find something that works, I am content to stick with that and never branch out. So, like, if I find a lunch that I like eating, I can make that every day for myself for like a year, and I will be okay. Yeah. And so, when it comes to music like my the songs I exercise to haven't changed in years, which is a problem for me. But the thing is, I'm just like <laughs> the idea of branching out and exploring new stuff rather than being like, that's exciting. I don't know. It sounds tiring to me. And I'm like, ah, I'll just stick with what I know. Yeah. I that's actually relate to that very much too. I'm the kind of, I know what I order the same thing at the restaurant. Every time I yeah, go, I know I, I like it. And then people will pressure me to not order that. And then I always <laughs> am mad 
and disappointed with whatever it's like <laughs> exactly that's true i'm the same way yeah well especially when you're out to eat the stakes feel kind of high at least to me they do because what my brain tells me is like if you blow this decision you would think it was my last meal because I'll, I'll same as you i'll be like why would i roll the dice on some uncertainty you know because what if it's bad like what's the worst case scenario like i there's no stakes but to me emotionally it feels like no i'm gonna go with what i know yeah well speaking of that next question is what is your go-to date night food another one we should probably ask your wife you should probably <laughs> i mean lately let's see when we lived in los angeles ramen we had a ramen place that was killer for date nights that we could walk to mm. um it's also i mean but like it's i would my date night has changed from like when i was single to now when i'm married because like when you're single you got to be mindful of like how heavy the food you're eating is you know because no one feels sexy after eating like you know indian food i love indian food but you know it sits heavy with you and yeah. so it's like sushi is a great like single date night food whereas like now i'm married i'm like indian food bring it all on it's okay if, you know <laughs> i fall asleep immediately after eating it <laughs> plus you don't want anything you're, you're gonna get messy or you might spill yeah yeah, yeah. That would or be that smells bad <laughs> yeah that smells bad. but i will say smells weird a good rule of thumb is foods that are easily shareable make for great date night foods mm -hmm. i think the more interactive yes you can make your foods like if you can cook it together like a korean barbecue is a mm. fun date night food because it's something you're doing together and you can share yeah yeah like a while ago they had on a homework movie they had the characters were going on their blind date to a rib place i'm like that would be the worst <laughs> you know the rib place but here's the deal <laughs> it, it's like is it the worst or in a backwards way is it kind of the best idea because <laughs> Everyone can be cute and in their comfort zone when they're yeah. eating sushi, like bite-sized food you don't have to use your hands for. Like, right. I would be curious to take someone to a rib place just to watch how they rolled with that. You know <laughs> what I mean? That's it's a good, a, it's a good, good opportunity point. to see how seriously someone takes themselves or if like, if they're just like, you know, <laughs> or if they're just getting into it. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's actually good. a good point. Yeah. I, I'll agree. I'll agree then. Okay. What is your go-to date night activity? So you're out and about doing something fun. I mean, the last two years, it's been a movie, right? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I think before we used to try to find activities to do, like, you know, there was, there was this, a really cool garden, like uh, uh, they did a nighttime thing with all these neat lights and things like that place called Descanso Gardens in, in Los Angeles. That was beautiful. Uh, like that would be a fun date night. Anything out of the house was fun, but yeah, in the last two years, it's been movies. Yeah. Well, we always say that if you're going to do the dinner and a movie, you should do the movie and then dinner, not dinner and then movie, because then you can talk about the movie when you're at dinner. And at least you have something to talk about. And it's really awkward. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Changing yeah. the world here. <laughs> it's not bad too, because you only have to do like five minutes of icebreaker and then you're like, shh. Yeah, exactly. And if so, things are weird and not great, you can just be like, oh, I got to go. Yeah. Oh, this popcorn's <laughs> some bad. I have a tummy ache. And then yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Smart. Or just be like, you know, I filled up on all that popcorn. Can we just call it a night? Let's not do dinner. Yeah. Right. Exactly. That's the problem though with it, right? Is then you're going to the movie theater and having to moderate your snack intake, which for mm. me can be problematic, you That's know, because if you're true. someone who likes to partake in the snack bar, you're having to play that game with yourself. We're like, if I'm eating ribs after this, can I really handle these pieces <laughs> in a hot dog? I don't know. I don't know. Right. It depends on how long the movie is probably too. If you're yeah. going to see like been her or something like that's very long <laughs> yeah then you need even more snacks or like lord of the rings or something like that. that's very long oh my gosh yeah what a terrible <laughs> date movie that would be <laughs> <laughs> i've always said i actually think movies that are just like a little bit scary are the perfect date movies not like murder or scary but just like <laughs> like a movie like crawl which was about these crocodiles oh, that's yeah. perfect because then you get like a little bit you kind of want to cozy up but you don't get like scared scared 
Yeah, I think that's a good idea. It, it keeps the energy levels high. Yeah. It's fun. It, it, it creates that opportunity for like, ooh, you know, yeah. grab each other. You know, if you want yeah. to have a yeah. cute moment, you can have a cute moment. Because <laughs> romance or, movies, that's a lot of pressure, especially for a first date. Oh, yeah. 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 Too know, much. Yeah. It's like a heavy movie. Do you really want to be crying in front of a show? <laughs> like, as a woman, you put all this time into like, you know, perhaps putting on makeup and everything, and now you're crying or, right. you know. Or as, as, you know, as, as a guy watching a romantic movie, it's like, am I allowed to cry at the end? Or is she going to judge me? <laughs> I like a scary movie. I one time was in a, a completely packed movie theater. I, I love scary movies. They scare me, but I like the ride. And I think it was like the first Insidious. And I was on board. And there was a moment where absolutely nothing scary happened. But for some reason, I thought something scary was about to happen. Mm. So when the movie was, com- the theater was completely silent, I shrieked. Oh, no. The point where people like, turned and looked and saw that it wasn't yeah. my, my girlfriend at the time. It was, it was me, the grown man, and had a collective laugh about it. Yeah. So yeah, I'd say the scary movie. It's fun. That's yeah. the thing that Netflix and chill can never provide. Is that group mm, yeah. experience? <laughs> yeah. Embarrassing yeah. theater experience. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. All right. Which do you prefer, dogs or cats? Dogs, come on. <laughs> <laughs> or cats. Oh, okay. <laughs> Beaches or mountains? Both. Because, okay. yeah, when you're in Chesapeake Shores or in Vancouver, you have everything. So it's yeah. kind of hard to argue with that. Or LA. Yeah. Uh, would you rather be in a suit and tie or sweats? I mean, <laughs> sweats. Although I will say it feels nice to get dressed up every now and again. Yeah. You know, it, 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 really to, get, does. to get sharp. Like even in this quarantine, I've found Jenny, my wife, will always make fun of me because for the first year, I mean, I still do it though. At the quarantine, like I would wake up to my morning routine, exercise, shower, and then I would throw on like, jeans and a t-shirt and shoes and she'd be like I'm the only person seeing you <laughs> we're not leaving the house what are you you know and yeah. if there's something to be said for like if I stay in sweats all day I kind of feel like I've never really started my day yeah. you know yeah yeah it's this weird thing of like if I shower and put on clothes I feel like I'm at least attempting to have a normal day yeah whereas if I stay in sweats I just feel like it's just complete lazy day it's a weird mental thing for me so I, I would i would say sweats but you gotta you know doll yourself up every now and again yeah yeah i just uh went to my friend's wedding which was a masquerade wedding and i was wow. like it felt so good to finally do something where i was like i don't know, trying to look nice <laughs> i feel like it's yeah. been like three years since i had anything like that it was really nice yeah, yeah it feels good yeah it does it does Agreed. Okay. What is your favorite holiday to celebrate? Christmas. Duh. <laughs> You're on the, the right channel. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Good answer on brand. All right. What is your favorite Hallmark or romantic movie? Wow. That's a really good question. Favorite Hallmark or romantic movie. I'm not going to do the easy thing of saying Christmas House too. Okay. But that's a contender. That's a there have been people who've said their own movies and no judgment from us. Yep. I'm not going to be one of them. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I love it, but that's just, you know, uh, a favorite romantic movie. Oh boy. I'm trying to think of it. It can be, ro- it can be a rom-com. It doesn't have to be just like super well, dramatic romance. I think Just Friends did a fantastic job uh, of being laugh out loud hilarious while also telling romantic comedies are tricky because everyone knows them everyone knows what's coming yeah hard to keep people interested when they know the playbook you know and so when a movie is able to surprise you and keep you on your toes with a story you already know it's very impressive it's very hard to do yeah so yeah just friends would be up there yeah, I think that's also what makes them comforting, though, is that you know what you're getting and you sit down yeah. and you're like, yes, I'm ready oh, for it. <laughs> absolutely. I think that's one yeah. of the reasons why Hallmark movies work so well is that yeah. it's a safe place to go. 
right. where you know you're not going to be hung out to dry. Like there might be five <laughs> minutes of conflict for your lead character, but like it's never really bad conflict, you know, but you know they're going to get their happy ending. Like there's comfort in that. Yeah. But yeah, I think that predictability, it, it makes sense that people love Hallmark movies. Yeah. Very good. You answered all the questions. <laughs> oh my gosh. Did I pass? You did. You passed yes. the test. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, like you keep making Christmas movies as if we had any say in it, but hey. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks. So this has been so much fun. Thank you so much for coming and talking with us. This was great. It was my pleasure. It was nice to see you all again. Yeah. And we hope you have a very Merry Christmas with your little one. That's so so exciting. exciting congratulations first christmas yeah that's exciting thank you very much and december 18th it's it's going to be the 8 p.m hallmark i want to know if we buck the trend of sequels being worse than the originals all right well okay. let you know read me and let me know okay your thoughts and feelings Okay, we will. We, we, we will. I'm. I'm. I think you guys can really pull it off because of the family dynamic. I think you could really do it. And with this I, cast, I think you guys. I think it's going to happen. I think we've got a shot. So I'm. I'm very uh, uh, eager to hear what y'all think. Very good. Okay. Well, do you have social media you want to share? Uh, sure. On Twitter, I'm Robert Buckley. On Instagram, I am Robert Earl Buckley. Well, thanks again. And we wish you a very Merry Christmas to you and your family. Hope you have a yeah, great thank you. Happy season. holidays. Merry Christmas. And maybe we'll be doing this again next year. Yeah, we'll oh, plan on we We're scheduling so. it in. <laughs> All right. Take care. Bye. 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 I'd like to thank Robert for coming on the podcast. That was so much fun to get to talk with him. And please let us know your thoughts about all the different things that we talked about in the comments or on Twitter. And Anne, how can people follow you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at awscott21. Great. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So please take a look at that. Also make sure you're following the podcast, the Hallmarkies Pod and Hallmarkies Podcast, all of our social media. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave us your five-star reviews. We really, really, really appreciate that so much. It helps people find the show. And if you are watching on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We also have our merch store, which has tons of fun designs for the hardy, postable, hallmarky, and just movie fan in your life. Please take a look. And then we also have the patron group, which is a lot of fun. We have lots of great uh, fun on the Facebook page and in our watch alongs. So please take a look and supporting us. Uh, on the Patreon. And thanks again to Robert. We appreciate it so much. And we'll talk to y'all later. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.